Hello and welcome back to the series on text classification and Python for the digital humanities or anyone who's just generally interested in it. In this video, we're going to be working with Spacey 3.0 to try to create a modest text classifier using not only Spacey 3.0, but the built-in data sets from Explosion AI. Now, in all of my videos, I always try to not use pre-cultivated data sets because one of the biggest challenges in the digital humanities is a lack of data sets and knowing how to cultivate ones correctly. We're going to do that in the next video. In this video, I simply want to introduce you to the basics of Spacey 3.0 for the new training things that are kind of included with it because it's a little different than Spacey 2.0, which I've dealt with in previous videos. So that's what we're going to do now. And if you don't know about Spacey, I highly encourage you to check out my earlier videos before watching this one on Spacey, and there'll be a link in the description down below for those. The first thing that we're going to do, assuming that you've already pip installed Spacey, is we are going to actually, just as you might expect, import it. So the first thing you always want to do is just import all the libraries that you're going to be working with. We're going to say from spacey.tokens, there we are, uh, we're going to import doc bin. Now we have not worked with this in any of my past videos. I'm going to do a lot more explanation of doc bin in a later video on my tutorials on Spacey 3.0. For now, just follow these in basic instructions. We're also going to import from ML datasets, import IMDB. This is going to be the data set that we work with. Now, if you haven't done so, you're going to want to pip install ML underscore datasets, and that will automatically download that, uh, that library for you. And that library is going to be used to actually download the data sets. We're going to see that in just a second. The next thing we want to import is just Spacey. That's going to allow us to easily create our model. And it's always good practice when you're doing this to run the first kernel that has all of the, all the libraries and make sure that they all imported correctly. If they have, congratulations, you can move forward. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make two objects. One's going to be called train underscore data, and the other is going to be called valid underscore data. And we're going to make these equal to IMDB, and this is important, run it as a function. And what that's going to do is it's going to call the IMDB function from ML underscore data sets, and it's going to allow you to easily import all of the necessary data for uh, working with this tutorial. Now, for me, it's going to run a lot more quickly than for you because I've already downloaded these data sets. If this is your first time running this, it's going to take a little bit of time to download all of them. And... Even with me, there's about 25,000 different reviews in this data set, which we're going to see in just a second, so it's taken a long time to load them into memory. It should be done in just a few seconds. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to write in our next kernel print, and we're going to print off train underscore data zero. And the reason why I want you to do this is because it's very good to look at the nature of the data before you're working with it. And once this kernel gets finished running, we'll go ahead and execute this kernel, and actually take a look at the train underscore data object to see what it looks like. The train underscore data and the valid underscore data are going to be the exact same. They are two different training sets that we're working with. In machine learning, you always have three different training sets. There is the train data, which is what's going to be trained on during the training process. There is the valid data, which is going to be used to validate the data. And then there is the, um, and then there is finally the, um, the testing data. This is taking a little longer than it should. The testing data is used to uh, run, it's viewed as held out data so that you can test your model after it's trained on stuff that was not seen during either the training or validation phases of the training process. Now that we've loaded that object into memory, let's print it off and see what it looks like. This is what all of our data in both train underscore data and valid underscore data look like. We have a tuple in each index, and the first zero index zero is going to be the review from IMDB, and if it's classified as a positive POS or negative NEG review. Now that we know what our data looks like, it's time to start writing our function for manipulating that data and getting it into the format that we need to work with in a spacey training script. So we're going to create an a function, oh, <laughs> helps if you're not speaking while writing, called make docs. And this function I got from a Medium article that I'm going to link in the description down below. In the Medium article, however, there are problems with this function, and I've corrected those so that you won't have the same issues I did when I was trying to execute this script. We're going to have an empty 
a list called docs. And we're going to say for doc, comma, labels. We're going to iterate over uh, both of those in nlp.pipe data. So we're going to pass the data to, it's important to understand that we're passing an argument of data here, uh, to as underscore tuples. And we're going to equal that to the, um, to the boolean true. So we're going to iterate over all the data that we're going to pass to this. And the data is going to be all the training data and all the validation data that we want to pass. And we're going to say if the label is equal to POS, then we're going to want to make sure that doc.cats, and this is where we can store some metadata here, doc.cats, it's positive is going to be equal to zero because it's negative review and doc.cats negative is going to be equal to one. So if it's a positive review, it's going to have, uh, it's, if it's, uh, sorry, if it's negative review, I wrote that backwards, it's going to be, have a positive of zero and a negative of one. So it's going to be a binary classification problem. And there can be some fluctuation between these two when it's predicting on unseen data else. So if it's not negative, if it's positive, we're going to say doc dot cats positive is going to be equal to one. So if it's a positive review, make it a one doc dot cats negative, we're going to make that equal to zero. So if it's a positive review, it's going to have a positive rating of one and a negative rating of zero. It's going to be true and false. That's what the one and zero mean here. So that's what we're going to iterate over all of that. And then we're going to say docs.append and we're going to append the doc. So what this is doing is it's reading in this object right here, uh, the, the review and the label separately, and then storing it as a specific category as a docs object. And that's what we're appending to the docs list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return the docs. And you're going to see how this function is used in just a second. For now, let's go ahead and just execute that kernel. And it looks like I have some invalid syntax uh, for doc label. There we go. That's all I did. And now that we've got that loaded correctly, we're going to say NLP is equal to spacey.load. And we're going to load in core web SM. Now, if you haven't done so already, it's important to download the web in, uh, web core in core web SM, which is the small spacey model, the small English model. And I cover how to do all of that in my spacey tutorials. Okay, now here comes the fun part. This is where we start actually making the training data. We're going to have a number of objects, ob uh, number of texts object, and we're going to make that equal to 500. You can make this whatever you want, um, because this is going to be the number, the amount of um, validation and training data that we pass, that we generate essentially. So what we're going to do is we're going to say train docs is going to be equal to make docs. And this is where we're going to call in this make docs function up here. And we're going to make that equal to train underscore data. We're going to start at index zero and go all the way up to num text. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say doc bin. Whoop. Doc bin is going to be equal to doc bin. And what this is going to do, it's going to binarize this data so that we can save it to disk in the next line. We're going to make that equal to train docs. So this is going to take that one argument. We're going to pass in train docs to it. And then we're going to say doc underscore bin dot to disk. And we're going to save it to the data subfolder that I have right here. And we're going to save it to train dot spacey. This is going to save it as a binary file. And then we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to copy and paste. Never a good idea to do this, but don't worry. I am a professional. So let's do valid docs. We're going to do valid data. And then everything else is just going to remain the same. We'll do the valid docs there. And we're going to save this to valid. Valid dot spacey. So we're going to save the, the training data and the validation data as two separate things. We're going to execute this and we're going to figure out what this error is. Uh, so English object has no attribute pip. Where are we getting that? Oh, pipe. There we are. And now we're going to run it and everything should run smoothly now. And this will take a few minutes. While this is happening, I'm going to explain the next stage of this process and then we're going to come back to it. What we need to understand is that the way in which Spacey works now is fundamentally different than how it used to work when, when it comes to training. Now, when you want to train something, 
you have to actually go to a separate file called the base underscore config file. And you're going to populate this file from the Spacey website. This is a default way of doing it. What you're going to do is you're going to, I'm going to give you this link in the description down below. You're going to select English as the language or whatever language you're working with. This is going to be how it tokenizes everything. You're going to select text cat CPU because you might not have the, C the GPU version installed on your computer. And just for now, just run for efficiency. We're not looking for accuracy here. What we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste all of this and leave exclusive categories untagged for now. You're going to see why in just a, a few minutes. And you're going to copy and paste that all into your base underscore config dot CFG file. And what you're going to type in here is data backslash train dot spacey for the train path. And the dev path is going to be data backslash valid dot spacey. And you're going to save that. And let's go back and see how this script is doing. It looks like it's finished. Fantastic. What we're going to do now is I'm going to open up an environment terminal. And what I need to do first is I need to get to the right directory. So I'm going to pull up my directory over here, copy and paste it, go back into my command prompt, zoom in so you can see, type in cd, which means change directory, and hit enter. I am now in the correct directory. What I'm going to do from that directory where I've got my script is I'm going to run python m spacey init fill config. This is a default function that comes with spacey now. And that function is going to take uh, the first argument here is going to be base underscore config dot CFG. And we're going to automatically populate a new file ca called config dot CFG. That's going to be the second argument. Everything spelled with spaces. I'm going to copy this in the description down below so you can copy and paste it if you want to. And you're going to run it. And what this is doing is it's automatically making a config file for us, properly formatted the way Spacey expects it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to run that config file. And when I run this, I'm going to go over to the config file and explain to you what it is while Spacey goes through and does the training. So we're going to run it by simply saying Python dash M Spacey. We're going to call the train function in Spacey. We're going to tell it to go to that config.cfg file. And we're going to pass in one specialized argument dash dash output. That's how you do this. And you're going to tell it to output into the output directory, which is a subfolder I have already made for us. And let me just make sure everything runs correctly. And the training process has begun. I'm going to minimize this now and go back into our Jupyter Notebook. While that's training, I want to come over to this config file and talk a little bit about it. This is where the magic happens now on Spacey. This is how you do training in Spacey 3.0 is with a well-cultivated config file. And so what this config file does is it tells it everything. It, it, it controls how the model trains, the, the architecture that it trains on, if it's GPU or if it's not GPU. It tells it how many layers to actually have in the architecture. You can control a lot more with Spacey 3.0, and it all happens here in this config file. That's why it's important to have it well properly cultivated. And these are going to be really good if you're doing a lot of experimentation or and you find like a really good architecture that works for a very specific problem. This is going to be where you come to actually develop a new architecture for a specific problem and a specific training workflow. These are going to be really, really useful moving forward. I'm going to have a whole series where I pretty much just talk about the new ways you train models in Spacey and how much better it is with Spacey 3.0. While that's happening, let's go ahead and start writing a script to test our future model out, which is going to appear in this output over here, this output subfolder. So for this file, we're going to make it where we can kind of test the model out. So we're going to say import spacey. And we'll execute that just so it's done importing. And things are going to be a little slower right now because I'm training and I'm training on the CPU. And so what we're going to do is we're going to import spacey. And you know what? We're going to also say from ML datasets, import IMDB. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Train data, valid data is equal to IMDB. We're going to just execute that, load that up. IMDB is not a thing. Now it is. Congratulations. And so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to really try and use the model that we just made. 
So we're going to say doc is equal to NLP. And we're going to actually make a text first. Let me do this. I'm going to say text is equal to train data. I'm going to call something that was out of scope. This is a text that was not in my training or validation set because it's at 3,000. And the highest we went with train and validation was 500. So this is going to be a completely new text that our model has not seen. And we're going to say NLP is equal to spacey.load. And this is going to be our output model. We're going to select model-best. We're going to have two different models saved. We're not going to execute this just yet because our training process has not finished. We're going to come to it in just a second, though. We're going to say doc is equal to NLP text 0, because remember, index 0 is the review and index 1 is the label. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say if, um, let's just Let's just print off doc dot cats. And then we're going to print off, let's print off the text itself. So this is going to allow us to see what the prediction is from our model, this doc dot cats. And this is going to tell us what the text is and what it looks like. I'm just going to select 2000 because I think 2000 is a shorter document. And while we're waiting on that, Let's go ahead and look and see what's happening in our training process. Wow, this is actually not looking too bad. We have a model that's going to probably be around 80, 81, 82% accurate. Again, there's different ways to measure accuracy here. Uh, but yeah, that's not too bad. I was expecting something around the 70 percentile. I'm going to pause the video right here and then come back when our model has finished training. Let's go ahead and grab the right text. And now let's grab the last one. Why not? And it helps if you spell spacey correctly. And now we're going to run our model over this unseen data. And it's making a prediction that it is 97% negative and only 2% positive. So let's see what it is. First of all, this movie reminded me of the old movies I used to have watching religion class in school. Okay, yeah, I picked this kind of at random. Uh, but the important thing here is that it's a negative review. Let's try another one. So we're going to try 2,500. Let's see how the model performs on that. So it's telling us this is a positive review. And in fact, it actually is. So we have a model that's 80% accurate, and it's looking like it's predicting things pretty well. What happens, however, if I introduce some really unusual data? So all the data it's seen is... Uh, stuff that is strictly around the concept of movies, right? And typically texts that are a lot longer. What happens if we introduce something that is completely different? And now for something completely different. So let's go ahead and just modify this script just a little bit. And I'll change it back for the repo when I make this available. Uh, I absolutely love fried chicken, which is a true statement. And we're going to say that. And it's predicting that this is 69% positive. And we know for a fact that that is very positive. You don't get much more infatuated with fried chicken than that. But the model's never really seen the word fried chicken, probably. And it's never seen reviews this short. So it doesn't really know what to do with them. I love this movie. And you see it struggling. You see it struggling at 58%, even though that's a very good review. It's because the text size is probably throwing the model off a whole bunch. So this is an important thing to understand when you're training text classification models is Use training data that you expect to be in the real world. So what is your model going to encounter? That's going to be something to think about. And it's important to also remember that once you train a model, that's not the end of it. You can continue training it. You can update it. You can redo all the training from the ground up. In the next video, we're going to pick up here and we're going to solve a very specific problem, which is trying to create a text classifier to identify hunger and Holocaust oral testimonies. That's going to be it for this video. If you've managed to have a general idea about how um, the training works in the new Spacey 3.0 and you follow these steps step by step and you got the model working, fantastic. You're ready to move on. If you have any problems at all, let me know in the comments down below and I'll try to help you out as best I can. That's going to be it for this video though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. And please, if you guys have benefited from this series, do feel, uh, feel happy to contribute to my Patreon also linked down below.